Everybody, how's Pax going so far? Having a good time? Tired? Enjoying taking a load off? So we're going to start the Q&A here in a couple minutes. In my couple minutes, I mean right now, because apparently everybody's here. Um, so we've got a couple of developers here to answer any questions you have. Um, if you've had a chance to play Game Update 1.2, feel free to ask questions about it. Uh, if you saw our legacy presentation before and you thought of a question while you were wandering around, now's a great time to ask. Any, anything on your mind, feel free to ask now. these guys. Um, let me go ahead and introduce, I'll be wandering through the crowd so you guys can ask your questions, but let me go ahead and introduce who we have here. Uh, my name is David Bass, I'm on the community team, and I also have Stephen Reed, our community manager. I've got Corey Butler, one of our live producers. He makes sure the servers don't break. That's all he does. Uh, James Olin, game director, Woo! freshly off the plane. May not know what time it is right now, but that's all right. And uh, Cameron Winston, who's one of our combat designers. Cool, so I'm going to wander through the crowd. If you guys have questions, just catch my eye. Slip me a dollar. And, uh, check. Cool. Let's start right up front here. It works. Cool. Why are the, why are the smuggler missions not very smuggler They basically are like almost any other character. You don't want any smuggler missions. You can't do more stolen goods from one end of the galaxy to the other. I, I did not hear that question. Okay. Question was, in this, as a smuggler, you don't do anything that is actually counts as a smuggler. You don't transport goods from the huts or anything from one part of the galaxy to the other and try to avoid getting caught. Is that coming out soon to remain some of these characters a little bit more in terms of what they can do besides the basic just run up to somebody and go, what can I do for you, what can I do for you, what can I do for you? All right, so did anybody hear that, that question? Okay. Uh, okay, I'll just repeat it. Um, he's just asking, the smugglers right now don't really get to smuggle in Star Wars The Old Republic, so when are they going to have some kind of smuggling minigame? Um, that's something we have been discussing. I can't give you a timeline. We have a design for it. Uh, it's definitely not coming out in the next couple updates. But it is something that uh, is obviously a big part of that class, and um, you can't expect something in the future. So many questions right over here, right? Yeah, you, I was looking at you before. Hey, what's up? How's it going? How are you? I don't know if they're ready to... <laughs> How's it going? Uh, so I love the game, and uh, before playing Star Wars uh, The Old Republic, I was a big Star Wars Galaxy fan. And part of that game that I enjoy the most was Space Combat. And right now, Space Combat and the Old Republic is kind of on a track, which is interesting again, it's that Star Fox kind of feel. But I was wondering if you guys were eventually going to expand upon that to make it more dynamic and more controllable by the player. So the question is, are we going to expand the space game? So I, I give you my answer I've given several times, which is we do have a secret project in the works right now involving expanding the space game that I actually got to try out a week ago. It's really cool. But I can't say anything. No, I've, I've said that before. Don't worry, I haven't revealed anything I haven't said before. Uh, which planet of the Old Republic did you guys most enjoy designing and why? Uh, so the question is, um, which planet did we most enjoy designing in Star Wars Old Republic? Um, if you talk to the writers and the world designers, it would be Voss, and that's because Voss is the only world in Star Wars Old Republic that's brand new that hasn't appeared in any other Star Wars fiction. So. The uh, designers got a lot of creative freedom in that world. That's why they like it. Hello. This wants to be kind of a long one. So the way the way the game is now is like if you were to take care of level one to level fifty, all the, uh, the gear that you get from questing is sufficient enough to progress you through all the way to the end. Um, however, you know there's still like greens, blues, and purples that still drop and. No point, like me having to grind them stuff. So I was wondering if you plan on like repurposing all that stuff. Because what ends up happening is they just get either vendor or thrown out uh, the black trail. Uh, so are you talking about um, greens, blues, and purples in the level up game? Yes. But you do, don't you use them as you're leveling them up? Well, I mean, I do. But I mean, like it's either like I mean, if it's an upgrade, I'll take it. But 
usually I just end up like uh, just throwing it out pretty much. If I have no use for it. So oh, it's not better than your current equipment. Yeah, right now, if, it's, if you can't use the equipment, then yeah, you give it, uh, you put it on the auction house, um, and you sell it for extra cash, so you can buy something else in the auction house that you could use. In addition, once um, our legacy system's out, um, which is coming in one two, you're going to hopefully be having a whole bunch of uh, legacy characters that you can start sharing equipment with. We also have legacy equipment. That's going to be equipment that binds on legacy, which is going to be really cool. So that'll make um, it a little more interesting. Right? So uh, I know you guys are coming up with the legacy abilities where, you know, my Sentinel can get the jump kick for smuggling and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> I play a dark side Sentinel, and, you know, for stasis, I don't really feel dark side Are you ever going to be able to, say, skin your force stasis to force choke, or skin your telekinetic throw to, you know, do a force like in, in the opposite of the Empire? So I can kind of customize my look a little bit more and still be dark side, you can still enjoy it on the public. So what you want to have happen is for your consular um, to be able to go to the dark side and then start using dark side powers? Is that what you're... Yeah, or it's, it's, to look dark side. That's a cool idea. But the same exact ability, just skin it differently. Yeah. So I can choose, instead of, you know, force takes us more and put them up, I can be more sensitive and actually choke them out. So, you know, instead of, like, being the good guy that I don't want to be, but I still want to be the public. No, that's a really cool idea, and I will take that under advisement and bring it back to the team, so thanks for the idea. Hey guys, so, uh, just looking for, uh, I was also a big fan of Star Wars Galaxies, and I was wondering if um, eventually we need player bounties. Uh, player bounties? Oh, player bounties. Um, so the question is about player bounties. So again, we have um, some ideas about player bounties. Um, when we're going to introduce them is still up in the air. There's a lot of complexities to player bounties because once you start encouraging player versus player killing in the open world, it can get really dangerous, it can get out of control. Um, so we have to make sure the system is well designed and doesn't cause PvP issues. As you're probably aware, we're very, we don't want any more PvP explosions in our game at this point. I um, actually have a question. Um, my favorite element of the game is probably like the single player campaign, the story. That's like the original Kotor, you know, all like single player based or whatever. I know you guys have made it clear that you're going to come out with new like flashpoints and things, but is there any thought into like in the future of actually expanding the story, new stories? Because I love like any, you know, I just. Just, you know, seeing a scene where it's like some guy that, you know, maybe double-crossed you and you hear John Williams' soundtrack, it's so awesome. Like, and it's thought into more stories and new stories. So the question is, are we going to continue to add new stories to Star Wars The Old Republic? I guess in the same vein as what you um, were used to in the class stories from levels 1 to 50. And the answer is yes, very much so. We have a whole bunch of people working on that. I can't talk about when you're going to be seeing that, but maybe soon. Oh, did we? All right. We did say that we're going to see some stuff this year, and then we're going to see a lot more next year as well. Let's see. Let's ask a question. You over here. Lovely costume. Okay, my question is, um, my guild and I, we all play, we were all placed on Saber of Exit Food, and it's basically, without transfers right now, our server is fairly low pop, and it's very, really, very hard part. We cleared all Nightmare Modes. Um, basically, it's, I don't know, we've lost uh, several people, and it's very, very hard to replace on a small server when you're hardcore raiding guild, because the pool is so, it's so little. Is there going to be a way to, is it, is transfers coming soon, is it what I'm getting? Because right now it's, you know, very difficult to continue raiding when we lose people. Uh, so the, the question is, are server transfers coming soon, character transfers? And the answer is, that is one of our number one priorities. I think I walk into the uh, programmer's office every other day and go, can we get this out faster? So yeah, no, it's, it's coming soon. It's just, um, it is, um, it's a difficult problem. We, we need to make sure that when you transfer over your character, it deals with all kinds of things like legacy and guild and all that stuff. So it's, it's not as easy as it might seem. I was wondering if you could explain the ancient pylons fight, what the working as intended way to beat that fight was. Are you talking about the ancient pylons in, in the Eternity Vault? Yeah. Eternity Vault. 
And so what, what's your question? What's the... What, uh, what, what, is, what was y'all's original intention design for a raid to meet that one the plan? Because we've only beat it with complete randomness and magic raid. Well, that was the plan. Just complete <laughs> randomness. Oh, well, then it worked perfectly. <laughs> It's, uh, we have been working on it. We know it's not very popular. Actually, we did uh, we did some testing, and um, that was the least popular element of every operation in Flashpoint. So um, it, we we know it's not the greatest thing in uh, in our game, and so we're, we've been looking at it. Yeah, we actually have some adjustments to it in um, update two. Me again. Uh, so. You guys are doing a great job in the game. I love it. It's been my favorite MMO for a long time. Um, I do have a question, though, with the art. What's with the Republic side armor? I mean, it, it, it doesn't really feel Jedi-like. It's the console head gear, the new Sentinel PvP set. It kind of looks weird. I'm just... Where are you guys getting the design for? Because, I mean, I, I see a level 10 Arata, and I'm like, oh my god, this guy's you know, crazy gear, and I look at him like, he's level 10? Like... I'm level 50 and I'm wearing junk. I mean, like, right now I have my orange set ready for 1.2, and it's a level 10 orange set because I think that looks the best. Do you guys have any plans to kind of revamp where your art direction is going with the Republic armor? Because right now, I mean, even Kara Carson says, would it all the fashion designers go over to the Empire? I mean, you guys threw it in the game, so I'm just... I mean, you must realize that the, the Republic kind of looks like... I mean... Well, okay, so the answer to that, the answer to that is, um, well... I play on the Empire, and the Sith Warrior is my favorite class, so I pretty well put all the concept guys on uh, the Empire, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, no, it's, uh, everyone has a different opinion on, on looks. We have, like, our concept guys, they concept a whole bunch of different things up. Sometimes our armor looks cool, sometimes not so much. We're trying to experiment. We know, we took all the feedback we got on the, um, from on our public test on some of the Republic armors, especially the Jedi Knight and Jedi Console, very seriously. Um, and the concept guys are actually, they've been uh, doing some really good stuff for the next year here that we're going to be doing in future updates. So it's, we're probably, yeah, not, that's, so it's, it's yeah, the, the stuff you saw, on, um, we know that that's not popular, so it's, uh, but we can't adjust that quickly. It's just sometimes, you know, we're going to have really cool armor, sometimes we'll miss a little bit, sometimes we'll, you know, the concept guys will come up with something that people really connect to. It's just, you know, you have to give the concept guys the freedom to experiment and have some fun. Uh, my question is uh, right here. Uh, Elam. So oh, at release, Elam was uh, sort of an important part of PvP, and then we, there were sort of a lot of problems with it, I'm sure you're aware. Um, and now it, it almost seems like you're sort of you know, phasing it out. As, you know, you, you're just giving up on it, basically. Um, so is, it, is that the plan? That, first of all, what happened, really? You know, and, and second, what is the plan in the future just to phase it out completely? Um, so the question is, what are we going to do with Illum? And the plan is not to phase out open world PvP and, and the style of gameplay that Illum introduced. It's just that we want to phase out Illum until we have a new version that's much better. Um, because the current version of Illum um, has a lot of issues, you know, because we haven't solved the, the faction imbalance. And until we solve that, we don't want to continue to struggle with something that you can't really you can't really fix it until you solve that major problem, and that requires technology that we currently don't have. Um, so that's uh, that's why we're kind of phasing it out. Um, yeah, I guess that's my answer. Hi, uh, I got a question about Color Crystal. Uh, I play a bounty hunter and manipulability. Basically, as opposed to a lightsaber ability class, Color Crystal for like bounty hunter doesn't seem to be as prominent. It's like maybe there's two skills that use that you can actually use with blaster. So is there like any plan to add something like that for non-lightsaber class? So the question is, yeah, when you get a color crystal um, and you put it on some of the classes, for example the bounty hunter, and if you have a bounty hunter spec that doesn't use the blaster very much, you don't actually see the impact of that color crystal as much as you'd like to. Uh, and are we going to do anything to address that issue? Um, currently we have no plans for that. Uh, is cross-faction transfers ever going to be available for characters who possibly want to go the dark side or dark side to light side? So the question is, can you switch from Imperial to Republic? Um, so actually that was 
part of our original design in, uh, back in 2007, we were going to do that, but then it turned out to be way too expensive and crazy. So we've been looking at a... You never know, though. Been, we keep on bringing it up. It is something that would be really, really cool. It really fits the kind of light side, dark side um, feel of the game. But um, currently, not this year. What's the word on the gay, lesbian, companion, relationship, straight, gay, transgender, did I cover everything, you know, uh, topic that was brought up? Um, so the question is, uh, what are we doing about uh, the gay romances in, in Star Wars The Old Republic? And uh, we do have a plan for that, um, but we're not talking about it until it's, we've actually finished it. So we'll have more information on that in the future. Though it is a pretty popular, uh, popular topic in the news, that's for sure. I'm currently a 400 Cybertech, and I make a lot of money off of gloomy earpieces, especially if I crit. I was trying to figure out what I'm going to make money on in 1.2, and if I'm going to have to grind dailies to earn all the gear, to pull out all the mods, and if it's going to cost me like 14 billion credits to get that stuff out to, reinvert, to reverse engineer, or if I can just do it without pulling it out to try and reverse engineer its mods. I can't give you specific answers to that. I can say we've done a lot of rebalancing in 1-2 for the crafting game and just for the end economic game. So as a crafter, I think you're going to be really happy with what we've done to um, in 1-2 to make all the crafting skills much more equal and to make it more fun to be a crafter and, and more economically viable to be a crafter at the high levels or at the top level. So uh, I'm Biochem, and you guys have said that reusables are going away. We're going to be able to keep the ones we have now, but any future ones are not going to be reusable anymore. Okay. So the question is, um, once we take reusables away, are, uh, once we change them into usables, are you still going to have your, reuse, uh, your reusables available to you? Well, no, we'll have that, but I mean, you said you're not going to introduce any future ones, so like, the next level of reusables won't be there. So. Biochem doesn't have the reusables anymore. It kind of loses the, the luster of the, the uh, crew skill. I mean, because if you have a one you can sell, it's only about a 10 point difference on the one that is exclusive to Biochem. So you think maybe in the future, since med packs are going down to once per fight, maybe Biochems can get like a special you know, passive ability that lets them use more than one per fight. So there's some sway to actually keep Biochem. Uh, I don't think we're planning for that right now, but we are planning to make sure that even though that change is coming through, Biochem is still going to be a viable crafting skill. I think if we know it's popular and we don't want to, we had to make some adjustments um, to make it, you know, to for power reasons, but it's, I don't think we're nerfing it really. I, I, I do. That's I mean, it. I, well, this is, I'm not a min-maxer, but I mean, the drawer of biochem is a reusable. I'm not dropping 60 credits to 60,000 credits a night on med packs and stims and stuff. Where you know, I can buy one on the auction house and I only get 10 points less. I'll take that 10 points less or 10 points more if I can just reuse it. I mean, I think the the, the biggest problem is is getting rid of reusables completely guts out biochem but for the most part. So, I mean, uh, generally speaking with crafting, it, it's really hard to say exactly what the, the reason one goes to. You know, are you a cyber tech because you love grenades, or are you a cyber tech because you love mods? I mean, uh, do, you, you know, do you think it's better to be a, an arms tech because you always want to have the best weapon, or do you think it's better to be an armor mech because you always want to be in the best armor? And what each player gets out of each craft is going to be really subjective to that. And, you know, you might think, uh, you know, without the reusable stim packs that there's no reason to be a biocam, or someone else is going, Wow, if I couldn't craft my own implants, I don't know how I could play this game more. Man, if I didn't have that stim that doesn't wear off, I don't know what I would do. So it's really kind of, there's a lot of different components to these, and we're always looking to try to make the most balanced and fun uh, crafting experience we can for you, where each craft brings something unique to your personal uh, character and playstyle. Are you saying, like, we're going to get some type of passes, like the game that shall not be named? Uh, I, um, I I really have no visibility into specifics with that, but I just you know overall know that the goal you know, from a design standpoint is to, is to give you know, each craft something you know unique and fun about it that, that is appealing to different players and different play styles. Okay.
So I see that there are uh, auction mouse, I'm sorry, GTN uh, UI improvements, which I'm very excited about. However, I noticed that you still don't have the, the feature like where if I were to say throw uh, 99 uh, bond art crystals into the little uh, into the little slot and say, okay, I want you to split into 10 stacks of 10 at such a price. So I was just wondering if that eventually will be coming. Um, so, yeah, we're going to continue to improve the auction house and every um, game system in, in Star Wars The Old Republic as, as we go on. That's, that's a known issue. It's, it's um, kind of a, a quality of life feature. That, um, it's, it's not a huge feature. It's on our backlog. So you will see it at some point, maybe this year, hopefully. I'm not making any promises. Oh, hello again, sorry. Um, so, two quick questions. One. Are you going to fix slash who to show guild or show a little bit more detail? Because right now it's a little bit random. Uh, and two, what is your intent for social points? Because as it is right now, it just seems like a endless grind to maybe get some Tusken Raider gear and that's it. Is there anything else you would want to do with it? So in response to the social points question, yeah, social points wasn't as balanced as well as we wanted it to be. Um, so it means that you, you got to the end game and you didn't have quite the social level that we thought you were going to have. Um, so we're looking at that. Um, unfortunately, for characters who are already level 50, you know, if we make changes to the level up game, that's not going to help you out there. So we've been discussing all sorts of different plans on how to make social points more relevant um, for level 50s and so that players don't have to do the grind. Because that's one of the elements of the game we're trying to avoid. But social points are really there to allow you to get really cool uniforms, and once you start using the mods, you know, you can be the guy who looks like a sand person playing through Eternity Vault, or, um, you know, the girl who has the Princess Leia gold bikini on playing through Eternity Vault, or some other ridiculous uniforms. So that's kind of the point of social points. It's like a social um, game system. And then your other question was... Oh, slash you. Um, we don't have any plans on that currently, but I will remember your comment. Uh, you know, talked about at the guild panel the crafting gear, being able to create and have augment slots on it. But raiding gear that the new raiding gear that drops won't have that. Is as a min maxer, am I going to be required to pull out my mods out of any raiding gear to put in an orange crafting crit, or is there going to be a way to s still have the same look of armor of the new the new tier of gear, but with the same augment slot? So you can have the same stats that we're in the crafting. So the question is, are you gonna, when you get your operation here, are you going to be able to look that way and still be at the top level in terms of power level? Uh, yes, as you will be. Okay. And uh, our, our item guy, David Schubert, he's going to be here tomorrow. He'll be able to give more details on it. Are you going to be able to ride animals like uh, the pandas or pontons or, or um, you know, anything really that you could ride in the Star Wars universe for an animal? So actually, that was our original plan. Originally we were going to have um, tauntauns and dewbacks and um, what's the cat feature from episode 2? Anyways, or uh, episode 3. Um, yeah, the next two, yeah, that's it. Um, anyways, but... Uh, we uh, ended up going with the speeders instead. Now we're, um, we are looking at adding animal mounts because it is pretty cool. It's a part of Star Wars. You had it in my favorite Star Wars movie, Empire. So, yeah, you'll see it eventually. <laughs> what about flying mounts? It's like Z access mounts. Oh, so I'm, I'm assuming you mean like total three uh, free form flying mounts in uh, in Star Wars? Yeah, that's the dream. That's definitely a cool dream. But uh, you won't be seeing that this year. Oh. I, I've noticed in the codex there are several discrepancies. We can't get certain titles. Uh, some of the data chrono discrepancies amongst different planets. For a completionist like myself, doing every quest and getting everything that is collectible, is that going to be fixed coming up? So are you just not able to get all the uh, codex entries basically right now? Well, apart from like body type 3 on uh, certain planets getting certain type of data codes you can't fit in certain areas, that is true. But there are certain um, um, terrorists you can't get one of the certain titles because there was a heroic that was taken out, it was in the beta. Uh, there, are, there are a couple other little lore items or animal item pieces you cannot find because they they're not in the game anymore. They're not in an area. Um, yeah, 
it's a known issue, and I don't. We have, we have so many fixes coming in uh, one two and changes. I would not be able to say whether it's in one two or not because it is kind of a smaller one of the smaller issues. But it is something that we know. So there are some codex fixes in in one two. You, we have done some fixes, so you're going to see some in one two. I don't know if they're the particular ones you're talking about, but they could be. I wanted to know. Um it's probably not going to be in one two, but if you guys plan on adding like extra races, because I would love to have like a little Yoda guy or like a Wookiee bounty hunter type of character. If you guys ever plan on adding like more playable races, yeah, the plan is to continue to add playable races um, throughout the like uh, throughout the project species yeah, species. Um, and we might have some new ones as soon as this year, um, definitely next year. So you're going to see some new species available in the in the near future. Except for the Gungans, you'll never see a gun. Gungan Emperor! Yeah, I know with the new legacy system, it's probably no easy task, but can we expect character migration? Are you talking about character transfer? Yeah, we're going to have, that's one of our number one features, so we're working hard on that. Uh, and as soon as it's done, point soon. Um, no, but very soon after. All right, good. Thank you. Just uh, to talk about character transfers for a second, uh, I doubt there's anyone here from that region, but we are going to be doing character transfer for Asia Pacific players, and that's kind of the first stage for us to get to a larger scale character transfer system. So that's happening right after 1.2, uh, and then uh, hopefully character transfer will be along at some point after that. Yes, that's coming right away, actually. You'll get that um, far before you'll get the, the full character transfer. So that was, it's very important. Oh, I'm supposed to remind everyone here that you get sweet titles for being on the public uh, test server. So we want to reward our players by leveling up on the public test server. All right. So I don't hear. So I'm actually kind of curious about that question that you almost answered for the guy about the uh, Sun Tech and Bio M of the reusables. Is will they actually still exist? If, if the pre anybody who already made a reusable, will it still be reusable, or is it going to be become a consumer? Yeah, I think the reusables that exist will still exist. They're just not, they're going to be deprecated as, you know, they become not as useful as all the other items go up in level. Can we get commas on the auction house? Yes. So when we break a thousand credits, having a comma would make it easy. So like when you have a million credits, it's really hard to see how many zeros. Uh, no, not I actually think there was a localization reason why we couldn't have commas. I think so. I think that was it. You can blame the French. It can be a period. I was wondering about the, uh, the future of any additional classes, like the races were, uh, if there are going to be any new classes. Or do you think you've uh, stretched how, how far you can go with how many classes you can have? Uh, no, we've discussed adding new classes to the game. And there's a whole bunch of different ideas we can go, like uh, different directions we can go with that. So, you know, we haven't allowed, and this is, I'm just it's like talking about the far, far future. But, um, you know, we haven't allowed a player to play a droid, for example. That'd be a really cool class. Oh, yes, there's a ship droid, which we're reviewing. Really, uh, you know that's a joke. So, I know in uh, MMOs, class balance is always an ongoing thing. It's never perfected, but for the most part, the changes are coming 1.2, I pretty much agree with. We have a, I have a stage healer, it's a friend, he said, screw it, it's going to be top of meters. But uh, our tank shadow, or hybrid, or shadow tank hybrids, are they really working as intended? 
Okay, so um, could you define what you mean by working as intended? So, uh, you have this one Shadar, this, uh, this asset, who regularly does easily over 400k damage, plus threat of protection every void star he does. It's just, and I, I play a Shadow, but I play balance because I don't want to be in the OP spec. And it's, it's, so, um, I, I, guess, I, guess, I can't kill one one on one without basically popping everything. So, so just to make sure I understand your question, you're, you're saying that uh, there's a hybrid spec for the uh, the Shadow and Assassin that you feel is overpowered, and do we think that's okay? Is that what you're saying? Like, I'm trying to understand your See, question. I don't want to be the, oh, this class is okay. It's just that, it's like, it's like is that one <laughs> so, from a design philosophy standpoint, our goal is obviously to, de to deliver you guys uh, with the most fun, most balanced uh, combat that we can deliver for you. And our intention is for that, uh, you know, all tanks to, to be just as tanky, all DPS to be just as DPS y, and to give you the, the kind of playstyle that you want to experience and, and to fulfill your own Star Wars fantasy. So, um, if there are hybrid specs that are outperforming uh, certain metrics that we have set for them, we're certainly going to take a look at that. I can tell you that as of right now, we haven't found uh, any any hybrid specs that we haven't addressed. It doesn't mean that they don't, the, the breakages aren't out there. It just means we haven't found them yet. And uh, as uh, we're constantly uh, doing internal tests and uh, we play on the live servers and we play in internal testings and just every day we're spending, we're talking about this kind of stuff, we're playing it, we're testing it out, and, and we're always uh, revalidating our, our assertions that things are balanced. So uh, I'm not saying that you know no changes will happen in the future, but we're definitely something that we're always looking at. And as of Right now, we don't see uh, any, any particular breakage there, but that doesn't mean it's not there. It just means we don't see it right now. It might just be these certain players. That... It's also, I mean, it, there's player skill, there's environmental things. Like some specs will outperform maybe in putt ball, some specs will be better in all ground, some specs will be better in PVE or, or this other stuff. And it all really depends on, on the contextual uh, part of the game. But uh, one of the things that we're always striving for is to create uh, a balanced, fun combat experience that works for the entire game. So, you know, you may see very small flashes of brilliance in one particular spec in one particular situation, but overall, uh, it, we, we contend that all the specs are, are performing uh, pretty well uh, in line with each other. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm a, a full player mainly of the game. And I have a, I have a big of the game. It's just not that good. That's a limit of one game per server. Are there any plans to change that at uh, So you have a problem with um, us restricting the legacy names per server, so you can only have one type of name on a server for legacy? And so what you want, so what you're saying is you'd like um, multiple players to be able to pick Skywalker, for example, as... Well, I like those who pick legacies for my characters on the server. Oh, you want a second? Oh, you want to have two legacies on the, the server. So currently, that's not in the plan for the, or a launch for legacy, but it is something we've talked about. Um, but you're not going to see it in, in game update two or three. So I love hotball. Hotball is like the greatest thing ever. Um, my fear is that in later patches, as you release more war zones, um, Hubball will become a lower percentage of the, the war zones that I get. So I was wondering if maybe we could get another Hubball, like another stadium or something. Like, you can never have too much Hubball. So. <laughs> That's actually something we've been talking about, is having a, a reskinned version of Hutball somewhere else in the, uh, like, in some other arena in the in the galaxy. But once we get um, crossover war zones, which is coming, hopefully, sometime this year, um, that's going to allow us to do things such as allow you to actually pick what kind of um, arenas you like to fight in. Because once you have a much bigger population of players to draw upon, um, then we can basically start, uh, we can get it so that you can customize your experience a little bit more, because you're not drawing from like 2,000 players, you're drawing from 200,000. I know you guys have probably already answered the question, and I know it's probably a common question, but what, uh, will we expect to see uh, dual talents back in the next year, at least this year? I think you're going to see it this year pretty soon, actually. Awesome. I was wondering, I know this is a big design and art thing also, um, and pardon me if I see the names wrong, 
is there a way maybe sometime in the future if we could get different fighting stances? Like I know like Shicho, Kuan, Juru, and all those exist, but is there a way that maybe you could add in different animation styles? So if I'm Watchmen or you know Annihilation spec, is there a way my uh, you know Mass Strike or Ravage could look a little bit different? Say if I was Combat spec, I think you guys might. I, you guys seem to be doing a great job with Legacy and making your character look how you want to be your style with character. I think that would be great if you could differentiate specs. You know, same thing with Shadows and Assassins. You know, if you switch your combat technique, you know, from Shadow you can have different you know finishers like when you finish off the character or just different animations in general. Um, so that is something that we uh, were experimenting with before ship, but it just became too complicated in, in terms of uh, just having all those animations available to all the different uh, classes and keeping track of them and all that. Um, it could be something that we see in the future. It's something that animators are very passionate about. They talk about that exact thing. Um, so it's more an issue of just time and, and effort and, and uh, complexity. I was wondering what, if you wanted to take the top three things that you couldn't get in patch 1.2, but you want to get in patch 1.3, what would be the top three? Oh, so if if we could um, pull some stuff from 1.3 into 1.2, yeah. what would it be? The top three. Um, well, uh, Group Finder is number one by far. Uh, then, you know, Character Transfer and Group Finder. I'd say Group Finder, Character Transfer, and... Damn it, he tricked me. Yeah, but we know we know group finders are very important to get out there because people at level 50 are they want to be able to find groups to go on operations and flashpoints a lot easier than they currently can. Um, it's one of the reasons why PvP is so popular because it's so much easier to do a PvP match than to form a group to do an operation. So it's really, really uh, it's a priority, a huge priority. And then obviously character transfer, another big priority. Um, so those are my top two. Do you think water will be mentioned in terms of specialization? So you mean um, yeah, within a class, uh, change your advanced class? Oh yeah, advanced yeah. class. That's something we've uh, we've discussed, but um, right now, not it's not going to be an update two or three or soon. We have some ideas about that. Though. So I was wondering if you have any plans to support the events team or maybe worldwide, uh, server-wide events run by GMs. Well, we do have a live events team. We have an events team that is currently working on some really cool stuff that you're going to see in the near future. But we, it's going to be kind of a surprise. The way we want to do these events is kind of make them more organic. So we're not going to announce them beforehand. They're just going to happen. Several of my friends are playing Warcraft with me. Sorry, sorry, their their fault, their fault, not mine. But so, uh, MMOs are obviously more fun when all your friends are playing with you. Do you have any plans to do like the, the sort of recruit a friend or uh, Scroll of Resurrection thing that Warcraft has going on right now? Is that any plans at all? Uh, well, we do. We do have the Refer a Friend program. We're actually making some adjustments to it to, we have some plans to make it a better program and have more incentives for players to bring friends along. Because um, we know that it's, it's one, of the, one of the best ways to um, continue growing your population is to get your loyal players to bring in their friends. So we have some, we're going to be continuing to expand that system um, throughout the year. It's actually one of, you know, one of the big priorities for the marketing group. So expect to see some announcements on that soon. It's a good idea for me to start running now. Do you guys want me out of here? <laughs> now, well, I know it's probably not coming in. I know it's not coming in patch 1.2. I'm not sure if it's coming in patch 1.3, but I run a huge guild, upwards of getting, getting about closer to a thousand. I wanted to know what we can look forward to seeing guild capital shifts, or what we can look forward to seeing on them. I know it's a big discussion and it's far off, but if you guys have anything. What was the, I heard Guild Capital Ships, what was the second one? No, 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 it was all Guild Capital Ships. Oh, it was all Guild Capital Ships. Yeah. If you have anything. Yeah, so we have a... Uh, 
it's uh, it's definitely something you're going to see in the future. It's just it's a big task because we want to um, you know we want to do it right. We want it to be a big part of the game. It's actually going to link into another game system which I can't talk about, which I've probably said too much right now. Is there any thought of doing uh, operation level grouping for war zones where you can have more than four people grouped together and then head into a war zone? I know, like with our guild, we look to try to get like six or eight people grouped together and then get in. That should be in one two. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I know that in one dot two, things that drop in ops, uh, so Mercata energy nodes and energy self-perpetuating cells and stuff like that are going to change to bind on equipped instead of bind on pickup. Will um, things that we already have that are currently bound to us change to bind on equipped then? So if we have uh, alien data cubes sitting in our bank, will they still be bound to us or will they change to bind on equipped? I'm pretty sure they'll still be bound to you. kind of where you can go in and change your hairstyle and your... Yeah, because I kind of yeah. don't like the ponytail sticking out of my head. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's another one of the features we want to get into the game, um, but I can't promise when that will come. <laughs> so I know this is, your, this is a bio as far as I'm about, and I want to say, you know, great job, you guys have... I, I think the fact that you even admit that you made problems is absolutely amazing. When I played Warcraft seven years, I'm like, no, we didn't, we didn't do that. And I, I'm, I'm an avid pvp -er, and the biggest thing right now, I see a problem with PvP is the exploits and some cheating going on. I mean, I can probably get through it, but I mean, you guys realize how much of it's going on, and are you doing anything to curb it very, very soon? So, um, PvP exploits and problems at level 50 are the number one thing in our bug fixes. So, it's actually um, Gabe and an Angelo who he heads that up. He actually uh, essentially has my power when it comes. He just sits in on the uh, bug triages and I say, just tell me what bugs you need to fix and we'll fix them all. So, the only reason you don't see them all getting fixed super fast is because a lot of them are complicated. So, we can't, some of the, the problems we have to, you know, we have to go and we have to iterate on and figure out how we're going to fix it without breaking other things. So, it's, it is a huge priority. It just takes time to, um, to fix all of those exploits. We are aware of them. Um, you know, we have a lot of people giving us um, that information. And Mr. Reed here goes to the community a lot. So we, we know what's going on, and we know it's a, a big deal. It's one of the, um, like for example, we do we do exit surveys on players for when they leave the game. And you know, it's one of the things that people bring up as a reason why they left the game. So we obviously want to fix it. If that's, uh, that's something we don't we want to slow down. Is Gabe the same person who fixed the pylon and SOA bugs though? Gabe has a lot of stuff he's responsible for. Do you need another bug fixer? I'm looking for a job. <laughs> one, one thing that you don't you don't actually see in the patch notes for 1.2 because um, we collapse uh, what we call we, we have a, a, a dev track system which tracks all changes in the game. And if we see a hundred changes in a patch, which are basically like we move the rock, we fix the texture, whatever, right? I know this is small, but those get collapsed into a note which might say, made our changes, right? One other thing I want to point out with 1.2, I think for the last count, we fixed up over 2,500 bugs with that patch. So it's a big patch with a lot of bug fixes. But it's an enormous piece of software, and you fix one thing here and something breaks over there, so, you know, it's a very long and ongoing process. And just want to let you know, you should have my money for the next five years. Thank you. So you can screw up as much as you like, as long as you fix it and keep committing it. That's fine with me. I mean, I, I think everyone can hear people standing and saying, you know, this is your first MMO, and I'm still amazed on how like, the combat is fluid. Uh, I just want to say, you know, again, I, I, I've already talked too much here already, but you know, yes, you guys yes. are doing great, and thank you so much for, you know, for what you've done so far and getting me back into MMOs and bringing my faith back into the community. Thank you. That, is, that sounds like a perfect ending question to me. Don't you think? I was going to say, who's going to follow that? Let's finish it on my note.
Okay, guys, we will be back at five. Um, we're mostly going to be talking about UI customization, giving a demo of that. Uh, we're still doing Warzone this afternoon at four o'clock, although that, I think the sign up for that may be finished. If you haven't picked up your baby Tonto mini pet and you're a subscriber to the game, then you can see Eric is sticking his hand in the air, and we have loads of those to give away, so feel free to pick that up. Don't forget, tomorrow night uh, we're doing a meet and greet at the Bioware base, which is Route 105. I believe it's up on this floor and over in that direction. Uh, that is completely free. Come along. 8 till 11, there will be an open bar. For those over 21.